A number of features have also been implemented to improve and increase your productivity when working with IGSS. The status bar in the definition module has been enhanced, partly by providing more information regarding the selected objects and descriptors, and partly by adding quick links to commonly used forms, such as the area and object properties, as well as the template forms. Let me open the refuse disposal diagram and find an object. The status bar is found down here and now displays the name of the selected object, the name of the template the object is attached to. If the object is not attached to any template, this field will be empty. The current position of the mouse cursor, as well as the position and size of the selected object descriptor. The current area is displayed here, and license information is displayed here. I will talk a little bit more about what these numbers mean later, but now they're just displayed here so you can see how many objects you've used and how many are left. The status bar not only displays information, but you can also click on certain fields to open forms. For instance, you can click the template field to open the, the object template form. Clicking the name field opens the object properties form. Clicking the descriptor position field opens the position and size toolbar. You can also display or remove the position and size toolbar here from the view position size toolbar. And clicking the area field opens the area properties form. Another new feature is the ability to reassign objects to other object templates and even remove a template from an object by using the property table viewer. As we can see, the P1 object is presently attached to the pump1 digital object template. Let's reassign the object to another template. First, we have to open the property table viewer. Note that the property table viewer opens the folder structure where the symbol from the diagram is located, making it easier to find the descriptor in the property table viewer. Let's find the object in the left pane and in the template cell. Select the new template Note that you can also move the object to another area. The P1 object has now been reassigned to the Pump2 digital object template. To disassociate an object from a template, simply leave the template cell empty. New search criteria have also been added to the object browser. Firstly, the object description has been added to the results pane. Secondly, you can now search for the object name or object description, or both, and you can select to search by case or not. Note how the results differ depending on which search criteria are selected. If an object is placed on multiple diagrams, you now have the option of specifying which diagram to open. As we saw earlier, the Q1 object is located on two diagrams, the dairy and the refuse disposal. And here it is. If you are often switching between several diagrams, you can display the navigation toolbar by clicking View Navigation Toolbar. The toolbar stores the last five open diagrams, graphs, and areas, allowing you to quickly switch between them. If 
if you have stacked many descriptors on top of each other, you can cycle through them by pressing Ctrl and Shift and clicking with the left mouse button. Here, the stack of descriptors are overlapping. Now, cycle through the stack using the mouse and Ctrl Shift buttons. Note that if you click too fast, you will open the object properties form, but otherwise, the descriptor in focus will be the one with the light blue coloring around it. On a quick side note, three new free value atoms have been added to the analog object. These atoms are identical to the actual value atom. They must be activated, and you can set the PLC mapping for each atom. Likewise, you can define the number of decimals and unit designation for each free value atom on the analog tab. The free value atoms contain analog readings and the data is stored in the log database, making the atoms available for display in graphs and the IGSS dashboard. If you want free value atom data printed on a report, you will have to use custom reports, as the standard reports use BCL data values. The free value atoms are accessible for VBA programming and ODBC based creation and editing. Let's go back to the refuse disposal diagram to see how to gather separated state symbols. If you have separated the symbols for one or more digital objects, for instance placing them on different locations, you can gather all the symbols again in one location. Here, the symbols for the P1 object have been separated and placed in different locations in the diagram. The symbols can be gathered by selecting the symbol in the location you want all symbols to be, right-clicking and selecting Align Gather Symbols. You can also click Format, Align, Gather Symbols for the same function. Note that you can toggle the display of separate symbols by clicking the View Show All States. This is, incidentally, how you separate the symbols from each other. Another productivity improvement is the option to faster create individual symbols for digital object states in templates and in animated symbols. The procedure is identical so let's look how it is done for the object templates using the Pump2 Digital Object Template. On the Symbol Definition tab, you can set up the appearance of the first state symbol, for example the off state. Let's give it a symbol and, se and select a color. Then we'll copy the symbol and paste the symbol and all its properties into all states. You could also just have selected another state and copied the symbol properties to that state only by clicking the Paste to Select State button. Now all you have to do is to change the symbol properties you want for each state symbol. In this case, the colors will reflect the different states of the object. So I'll be changing the color for each state. Let's create a symbol from the template and see how it looks. Each state should contain its own symbol with its own properties and different color. A great many new calculation functions have been added in IGSS 11. Most of them are functions that enable you to retrieve historical data from the databases in IGSS. For example, the log value function returns a single historical data value for an object from the log database as defined by the date and time. Likewise, the BCL value function retrieves a single historical BCL value for an object from the BCL database. The hour, day, and month value functions do the same, but from the HDN database or historical reduced data. 
In order to retrieve historical values, you must have set up your object to store data in the databases which the functions are to traverse. Other functions have been introduced in order to better provide input parameters to the data retrieval functions, such as the time or offset time functions, among others. Also, more general functions have been created, as the atom ID function, which returns the atom ID for an object's specified atom. Also, a function which returns the data reduction method used for an atom. This is an example of a log value function where we can see that the function requires three parameters the object name, which atom we want to retrieve log data from, and the date and time of the log data to be retrieved. In this example, Log data for the Q1 object's actual value atom is to be retrieved at the date 12th of March 2013 at the time 1523.55. All of this denoted here. See the definition modules online help for a list of all the possible calculation functions in ICSS. The functions have been split by object-based functions and database-based functions, as well as more general functions. 